Good morning and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality, and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation over the last Three, 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your calls on the bright side. If you have a success story you'd like to share, if you want to contribute to the conversation, if you have questions about formulations or ingredients or something you may have heard about, heard or read about in the newspaper or magazines or on the internet, we can help clarify things for you at 844-236-6010. And we'll get your calls in, the, uh, in our next segment. Bottom of the hour, we're going to be talking to Dr. Robin Chutkin about her book, The Microbiome Solution. Subtitle, A Radical New Way to Heal Your Body from the Inside Out. Well, I beg to differ with Dr. Chutkin. It's not a radical new way to heal the body. It's something we've been talking about for decades on this program. Or for, I've been talking about for decades, and we've been talking about on this program for years. The microbiome is the universe of bacteria that lives in the gut. They make vitamins for us. They detoxify substances. They help us process fats and clear out hormones. Incredibly, incredibly important. And it's good to see that now the medical community is on board. Uh, Dr. Robin Chutkin will be with us at the bottom of the hour. Her book is The Microbiome Solution. And we'll get your calls here in our next segment. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you're interested in checking out our Longevity products, please head over to brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com. And I'd love to have you on the Brightside Ben team as well if you want to make a little bit of money or a lot of money selling Longevity products, spreading the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, educating people about the value of nutritional supplementation, and you want to, you're entrepreneurial minded, or if you, if you have a day job and you want to just make a little bit of extra money, you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 8 Six six seven three five twenty four seventy, or you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team and purchase products off our websites: brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. And for those of you who are interested in super high-end skin health products, you can head over to truthtreatments.com and check out our Retinol Five Percent Gel, Truth Serum, Truth Omega Six Healing Cream, and Truth Balm, all at truthtreatments.com. All right, I want to continue talking about CLA, a very underappreciated fatty acid. CLA is related to omega-6 fatty acids. In fact, CLA is, uh, it's basically the same thing as omega-6 fatty acid. It's basically the same thing as an essential fatty acid, but has a slightly different electrical charge to it. It's slightly different, different electrical energy, and that makes it a non-essential uh, fatty acid. The body can actually make CLA. We make CLA in our guts. The microbiome, as it turns out, the bacteria in our gut make uh, conjugated linoleic acid. A slight twist that slight electrical twist gives CLA some interesting properties that regular linoleic or omega-6 fatty acid does not have, especially when it comes to inflammation or more accurately, anti-inflammation. CLA is anti-inflammatory. You can use CLA if you're dealing with arthritis or if you're dealing with inflammatory pain or after you work out, if you're getting, uh, if you're suffering from sore knees or sore hips or sore upper body after a workout, CLA is used by bodybuilders as an anti-inflammatory and as a bonus, 
the anti-inflammatory effects lead to muscle gaining effects and, and building effects. And CLA is a building substance as well as an anti-inflammatory substance. And these two features, these two benefits of CLA are connected or related. CLA, as I say, is made in the gut by the microbiome. Just another reason to pay attention to your diet, to our digestive health, to our intestinal health, to uh, our gallbladder health. Another reason why you want to keep your gallbladder. You gotta focus on fats. Fats are so darn important. This, the relationship between the production of fats and keeping fats in balance and the microbiome, the gut bacteria, is in my opinion the, if not one of the, it is the most important of all health strategies when it comes to how we take care of ourselves in terms of inflammation and anti-inflammation. Remember, all health challenges, degenerative health challenges, chronic long-term degenerative health challenges have an inflammatory component Component. Inflammation is, uh, and anti-inflammation is kept in tight balance and tight check. We need some inflammation. Inflammation is a protective response. It's not a bad thing. We have this idea that inflammation is somehow the body going awry, the biochemistry getting messed up. Not, not necessarily. It's the balance of inflammation versus anti-inflammation that's important. Inflammation is a major way the body protects itself, and it's always going on. And this is one of the reasons why anti-inflammatory medications are so problematic. Whether they're something as supposedly benign and gentle as Motrin, which is not benign and gentle, or aspirin, which is not benign and gentle, I suppose relatively compared to the more potent drugs they give you, but the fact that they control or modify or artificially manipulate the inflammatory process is a problem because inflammation is important. It's the balance of inflammation and anti-inflammation that is really at what we need to be considering if we're dealing with arthritis or some kind of inflammatory health issue which is to say all health issues. Using something like CLA, which is made in the body, which is actually a, a biological substance, using CLA as a supplement, not to mention vitamin E as a supplement, not to mention alpha lipoic acid as a supplement, not to mention magnesium as a supplement. Using supplements to control inflammation makes so much more sense because then the body has, a, has an ability to utilize the, these nutrients to, to control the balance of anti-inflammation versus inflammation. In other words, if you use CLA, if you have inflammatory pain, you're not going to over anti-inflame. If you use Motrin, you can over anti-inflame. You can have too much anti-inflammation. That's not going to happen when you use CLA. CLA, as I say, is made in the gut by the microbiome, which means that if you're dealing with an inflammatory health issue, surprise, surprise, you want to focus on the gut and the microbiome. This is the first point on our triangle of disease. And almost every day we come up with another reason why the digestive system is the first point on the triangle of disease, the first point where the body's, the body's degeneration begins. This is especially important for women who are dealing with hormone issues. The microbiome clears out hormones. If you got a messed up gut, you got a messed up uh, uh, microbiome. And we'll talk about this with, with Dr. Chutkin at the bottom of the hour. If you have a messed up microbiome, you're not going to clear out your hormones effectively, particularly estrogen. And we know that when estrogen is not cleared out of the body appropriately, autoimmune diseases can arise. This is why autoimmune diseases mostly affect women. PMS, inflammation related to the menstrual cycle, monthly migraines, these all can be related to uh, endometriosis. These can all be related to issues with the microbiome, issues with fat metabolism at the level of the intestine and probiotics. And again, these are reasons why you want to supplement with probiotics. You want to make sure that you're using, uh, uh, that you're uh, eating correctly, that you're not eating offensively to your intestine using digestive enzymes, the ultimate enzymes, and apple cider vinegar if you're dealing with female reproductive issues, among other things. And not to mention CLA, which is made in the microbiome, and you can support uh, the health of the intestine uh, versus uh, the anti-inflammatory health of the intestine by using CLA. For pregnant women, supplementing with CLA can make you a healthier baby. In an article published uh, in the February 2015 edition of the journal Biological Reproduction, researchers showed that CLA can protect off offspring from the adverse effects of a high-fat diet. We'll continue this when we come back from our break and get your phone calls as well. 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. All right, we're back on The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. 
1-844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here in this segment. We're going to talk to Dr. Robin Chutkin. Actually, we have an empty board here, so now's the time to get on board. If you haven't, uh, if you've uh, tried to call in in the past and gotten a busy signal, now will be the time to call us. We're going to talk to Dr. Robin Chutkin at the bottom of the hour about her book, The Microbiome Solution, a radical new way to heal your body from the inside out. It uh, features uh, probiotics, probiotic or microbiome-based strategies for dealing with digestive health issues, Crohn's disease, IBS, chronic fatigue syndrome, eczema. These are all things that we've talked about on this program for, for many years, and I've been talking about for many years in my presentation. Since I, since I first heard about the microbiome in pharmacy school, I remember when I, was, uh, when I graduated pharmacy school and went out to work at a, a drugstore, a, a big chain drugstore that we shall not name. Uh, when I first uh, w first dawned on me that that people who were taking antibiotics were going to have issues with their microbiome. This was the 1980s, and nobody really knew about the microbiome back then. But they knew that after you took antibiotics, your belly didn't feel so good. So I started recommending probiotics to folks. Uh, and there weren't a lot of probiotics back then. Uh, a company named Jer uh, called Jero had one. There weren't, there weren't a bunch of probiotic supplements in the uh, mid, mid to late 1980s. All of a sudden, somewhere in the 90s, people uh, realized, hey, wait a minute, there is this stuff going on in the intestine that's related to living creatures that are that's really having an impact on our health, but it wasn't until the last five or six or seven years ago that it made it into the mainstream, and now doctors are finally on board. So Dr. Robin Chutkin is going to tell us about her, uh, the microbiome from her medical perspective. Uh, I'm not sure if she's, yeah, she's an MD here. We'll talk to her at the bottom of the hour, and we'll get your phone calls. If there are any phone calls, we'll get to them in this segment. Otherwise, I'm just going to continue talking about CLA, which if you've been listening to the program for the last couple of days, you know I absolutely positively love. I love supplements that nobody knows about, uh, powerful supplements that nobody knows about. I want this program to be the place where you heard things first, and there's lots of things that, uh, if, you, if not first, you hear on this program way ahead of the curve. Vitamin K, for example, we talked about that uh, a lot last uh, a couple years ago, and now you're starting to hear more and more about vitamin K. Vitamin D, the same thing, and CLA, well... CLA was kind of popular back in the 1990s, but you're probably going to start to hear more and more about CLA as we begin to understand its role, the role this stuff plays when it comes to intestinal health. If you're a woman dealing with PMS issues or migraine headaches, monthly migraine headaches or endometriosis, in my opinion, you'd be smart to start supplementing with conjugated linoleic acid. If you're pregnant, likewise, in my opinion, you would be wise to start supplementing with conjugated linoleic acid. If you're a bodybuilder, in my opinion, you would be wise to uh, to start supplementing with conjugated linoleic acid, which is, by the way, available. Conjugated linoleic acid is available uh, pretty readily at health food stores and on the Internet. Um, if you're a pregnant woman, you would be smart to start supplementing with uh, conjugated linoleic acid. Uh, before we went to break, I was telling you about a study that was done on rats, pregnant rats who were fed a high-fat diet. Um, rats fed a high fat diet uh, would ordinarily have offspring that were not healthy uh, but it turns out that when these rats were given a high fat diet and supplemented with conjugated linoleic acid their babies were healthy how do you like that so uh, a scientist concluded in this paper, this was published in the journal Biologic, Re Biological Reproduction in February 2015, scientists concluded that supplementation with CLA may represent a therapeutic strategy in the prevention of metabolic and reproductive dysfunction, unquote. Science talk for CLA supplementation by pregnant moms can make healthier babies. In addition to uh, CLA's anti-inflammatory and protective effects, it is a growth promoter. This is why bodybuilders will use it. This is why you'll see it advertised in bodybuilding magazines and weightlifting magazines. If a bodybuilder is doing something, that's something that we should at least be thinking about. Not necessarily that bodybuilders know everything, but uh, people who are, uh, get paid for building their bodies tend to be more hip and more savvy to nutritional supplementation. You can learn a lot by reading bodybuilding magazines and, and, uh, and weightlifting magazines if you're interested in nutrition. Certainly it's not all accurate and there's hyperbole in it everywhere, but you can still learn some stuff from these types of magazines and you'll find things like creatine and uh, uh, arginine, which is an amino acid for building and, and uh, CLA. You'll find these substances that are all important for building and repair advertised in bodybuilding magazines. The growth promoting effect of CLA is why it's found in dairy. 
uh, nature leverages the growth promoting power of CLA for mammal babies and for human infants as well and this is why milk including human breast milk is nature's most important source of CLA and by the way formulas typically do not have CLA that is uh, infant formulas and this is Another reason why, if possible, moms want to breastfeed their babies. Sometimes it's not possible for whatever reason, but if it's possible, you want to breastfeed, breastfeed your baby. If you're using formulas, you may be getting the basics, but you're not going to be getting the trace compounds, the compounds like the CLA that are important for growth and, and, and for anti-inflammation. Anti Say what you want about milk, and I'm not going to tell you that, I'm not going to sit here and tell you the milk is a health food given all the processing that it goes through, the pasture and the homogenization and not to mention the hormones and the antibiotics and the other chemicals that the cows are given. So I'm not necessarily a fan of milk, but the fact remains that milk is the ultimate growth and development food. And that is essentially its purpose, to, to grow and develop a mammal. And the fact that milk is nature's richest source of CLA, as well as saturated fats and also cholesterol, this is an important point that's missed by many supposed health experts, particularly the old school ones. Like, well, I don't want to mention his name. I'm not going to mention these guys' names anymore. I kind of, well, I will mention his name. Dr. John McDougall. This guy wrote the book, The Starch Solution. The, all the old school doctors and old school nutritionists who tell us that we got to be on a low fat diet miss the fact that fat is in nature's most perfect food. Is, uh, nature's most perfect food is loaded with fat, loaded with saturated fat, loaded with cholesterol, and that's uh, breast milk. This, this medical approach, this medical model approach to diet and nutrition, the old school medical model approach, it's changing somewhat, slowly but surely. It's changing because it's correct and because it works. Uh, uh, the philosopher Schopenhauer said all new ideas are laughed at and ridiculed first, vehemently fought next, and finally accepted. So first they were laughed at, at first these ideas of diet and nutrition were laughed at. They were t uh, everybody thought it was really funny. We were health nuts if we supplemented. This was the 60s and 70s. I, I remember having friends who did supplement in the 60s and 70s, and I thought they were health nuts. Of course, I was 10 years old, and I was just listening to the, 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 the meme. I had bought into the societal meme about supplementing, and I remember thinking these people were health nuts. The next stage in a revolution, a scientific revolution, is it's fought, and that's where we're at now. You have the mainstream fighting. However, we're now approaching the third stage where it's finally being accepted by the mainstream. This idea of supplementing, using nutrition, and staying away from antibiotics, and staying away from drugs, and, and the medical model being a problem. The starch solution is a classic example of the old school. Dr. McDougall's book is filled with examples uh, of, uh, of bad science. If you want to listen to a guy named Steve sent me, thank you Steve if you're listening, sent me a video on his TED talk which I encourage everyone to listen to if you want to see how apparently intelligent people can come up with ridiculous conclusions. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We're coming back with Dr. Robin Chutkin. We're going to talk about the microbiome. A radical new way to heal your body from the inside out. I'm Farm Suspend. All right, we're back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thank you for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com. Also, benfuchsarchives.com. You can also check out my blog at pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase longevity products off the websites, or you can check out our Truth Skin Health products, including our Truth Retinol 5% gel. You're not going to find that one anywhere, folks, except at our truthtreatments.com. I've been formulating skin health products, as most of you know, for three decades, and I know a thing or two about how the skin works. You can check out our products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right. We are going to talk microbiome for the next half hour with Dr. Robin Chutkin. Dr. Chutkin is a gastroenterologist. She's written a book called The Microbiome Solution, a radical new way to heal your body from the inside out. I am so excited to talk to a medical professional who understands the importance of the microbiome. Although, to be fair, more and more medical professionals are, are getting hip to how important the universe of bacteria that lives in our intestine is. The book is The Microbiome Solution. Dr. Robin Chutkin. Good morning, Dr. Robin. 
Good morning. Thanks for having me on, Ben. Thank you for coming on. It's awesome. I have to tell you that uh, that a, a fully fledged representative of the medical model, the mainstream medical model, is on board like you are with this book. I mean, it's, it's a, I know, a treasure it's shocking, trove. Isn't it? It's very, very shocking. When did GI folks? I'm not going to ask you when MDs got under started to understand probiotics because they haven't yet. But when did GI folks really get hip to its relevance? You know, they they really haven't. They're still spending most of their time prescribing proton pump inhibitors and looking yeah. for colon cancer. So I have yeah. to tell you. It's a small club. It's a small club still. You know, we've been talking about it for years. I first learned about it in pharmacy school. So it's really nice to see that it's beginning anyway, that, that ahead of the curve folks like yourself are starting to leverage its importance. The, what I call the bright side philosophy is that all dis- part of it is that all disease begins in the gut. But as you point out very accurately in your book, it's all, all gut disease and by extension all disease begins in the microbiome. Can you walk us through how this develops, how it starts that the microbiome becomes a uh, breaks down and how it leads from a progressive step-by-step standpoint to arthritis or autoimmunity or, 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 or cancer or heart disease or whatever you know, type of degenerative disease we're talking about. How does the progression work? Absolutely. So I think you have a very sophisticated audience out there, but for those who may be a little bit unfamiliar, the microbiome, we're talking about all the microbes that live in and on the human body, about 100 trillion in all, more than a billion bacteria in one drop of fluid in your colon alone. And, you know, wait, 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 wait. hang on, hang on, Doc. (laughs) One, One billion bacteria in a drop of intestinal fluid? There, that's right. That's oh, unbelievable. It's a lot. It's huh. a lot. If, in fact, if you scraped up all the microbes in the gut, it would weigh about three or four pounds, even though we can't see them. Wow. But I think it- to really understand the connection between the microbiome and modern disease, I want to tell you about the hygiene hypothesis, which I think a lot of people will be familiar with that term. So in the 1950s in England, they were seeing skyrocketing rates of hay fever and eczema, particularly in kids. And so David Strawn was a professor at the London School of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene. And he was tasked with doing this sort of 25-year-long study, an epidemiological study in thousands of kids to see if he could figure out why. And uh, in the early 1980s, he published his findings. And there were two really surprising observations. The first was that these diseases were much less common in large households where there were a lot of siblings where the kids were getting sneezed on and coughed on and, you know, had frequent childhood illnesses. So that was in some way kind of immunizing them. And the second was that more affluent households where they were, if you will, loftier standards of personal hygiene had much higher rates of hay fever and eczema. So that Mm. second thing was that, hmm, maybe it was not good to be too clean. And this formed the basis for the hygiene hypothesis, which was later added on to by the good friends or the old friends hypothesis which also suggested that some of these more ancient diseases were important for training the immune system. So Mm. it still stands today. If you look at a map of the world today, you see high rates of autoimmune diseases in the developed world, in Western Europe and North America and so on, and very low rates in the developing world. And as countries Mm. become more industrialized, and we've seen this in Saudi Arabia and India, as countries become more industrialized and more widespread practices like chlorine in the water and antibiotics Mm. and so on, we Mm. see rising rates of autoimmune diseases. So this idea that there is a connection between exposure to germs in childhood and development of diseases is very real. And if you take the curve for the rise in most autoimmune diseases, things like Crohn's disease, MS, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, etc., you can superimpose that curve on the use of antibiotics and some of these modern kind of super sanitary practices. So That's there is no question about the contribution. There was a meta-analysis, a large study of over 7,000 children in New York a couple years ago, and they found that the number one risk factor for developing Crohn's and ulcerative colitis was indeed use of antibiotics. Mm. So it's this interplay between genetic susceptibility and environmental triggers, like wiping out our microbes, mm. that creates a perfect storm for disease to develop. Now, they, the hygiene hypothesis was about germs on the outside, bacteria. And by the way, for the listeners, germs are bacteria. They're, it's a, they're synonymous terms. So yes. germs, so when you're talking about germs in the hygiene hypothesis, you're talking about bacteria on the outside, exposure to these bacteria triggering our immune system to form protective chemicals, so to speak. Correct. But, yes. So then there was a leap that was made from the importance of bacteria on the outside to bacteria on the inside, right? 
Well, because we really couldn't measure them very easily before. I mean, the older techniques mm. for looking at the microbiome involved kind of sitting around for weeks on end while things grew in a Petri dish. Now with next generation DNA sequencing, we can take mm. a tiny sample of stool and we can pull the DNA out and know exactly what's growing in that sample. And so that's mm. really allowed us to make some direct correlations with things like oh, diversity. So we've been able to create microbial signatures for different diseases, for diseases Mm. like Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, obesity. Mm. And we see within the microbial signature things like low diversity of species and overabundance of certain species that are associated with inflammation and underrepresentation of others, low levels of short chain fatty acids and so on. So we're really able to to look at these microbial footprints and find some very uh, common threads with different okay, diseases. Okay, now, now there's so many things that you, so, yeah, there's so many things to talk about here. So tell me about, when you talk about low levels of one, high levels of another, what I think about is a balance of all the different types of bacteria. Yes, that's there exactly has to, there's, right. right. There's a relationship between too much and too little, and also with fungus and can- things like candida, correct? There's a yes. relationship between how much bacteria you have and how much fungal infection you have, things like H. pylori, for example, which is a bacteria that is associated with all kinds of inflammatory health issues. That is balanced out by these bacteria, is that correct? Absolutely. It's all about balance. And even some of the commensal, the sort of helpful bacteria, if overrepresented and if they're allowed to grow unchecked, can become Commensal meaning food. Commensal meaning food bacteria, right? And so, the, and so if you look at something like yeast, people think of yeast as being bad, but a certain low level of yeast in the body are essential for digestion. But it's when the yeast grow out of control. And mm. a common example of that is, you know, especially in women, when we take antibiotics and we get a yeast infection vaginally, that's overgrowth of yeast in our body. It's not that we've caught the yeast from a toilet seat or something. The yeast mm-hmm. are there and our body's present in low levels. But mm. when this sort of, you know, peacekeeper bacteria get killed off with an antibiotic, it then allows the yeast to grow out of control. So uh, for yeast infections, you would consider working on the microbiome, I assume. For people, not, not vaginal, for systemic candida, people who have the candida yes. problem, you'd recommend working on the, on the microbiome. Oh, absolutely. And I doc, doc, we're just at it. we got to take a break. we got a hard break here, but we'll be back here in just a sec. We're talking to Dr. Robin Chutkin. The Microbiome Solution is the book. I'm Farm Suspend. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. All right, we're back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thank you for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com. Also, benfuchsarchives.com. You can also check out my blog at pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase Longevity products off the websites, or you can check out our Truth Skin Health products, including our Truth Retinol 5% gel. You're not going to find that one anywhere, folks, except at our truthtreatments.com. I've been formulating skin health products, as most of you know, for three decades, and I know a thing or two about how the skin works. You can check out our products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right. We are going to talk microbiome for the next half hour with Dr. Robin Chutkin. Dr. Chutkin is a gastroenterologist. She's written a book called The Microbiome Solution, a radical new way to heal your body from the inside out. I am so excited to talk to a medical professional who understands the importance of the microbiome. Although, to be fair, more and more medical professionals are are getting hip to how important the universe of bacteria that lives in our intestine is. The book is The Microbiome Solution. Dr. Robin Chutkin. Good morning, Dr. Robin. Good morning. Thanks for having me on, Ben. Thank you for coming on. It's awesome. I have to tell you that uh, that a, a fully fledged representative of the medical model, the mainstream medical model, is on board like you are with this book. I mean, it's, it's a, I know, a treasure it's shocking, trove. Isn't it? It's very, very shocking. When did GI folks? I'm not going to ask you when MDs got under started to understand probiotics because they haven't yet. But when did GI folks really get hip to its relevance? You know, they they really haven't. They're still spending most of their time prescribing proton pump inhibitors and looking yeah. for colon cancer. So I have yeah. to tell or you. It's a small club. It's a small club still. You know, we've been talking about it for years. I first learned about it in pharmacy school. So it's really nice to see that it's beginning anyway, that that ahead of the curve folks like yourself are starting to leverage its importance. What I call the bright side philosophy is that all part of it is that all disease begins in the gut. But as you point out very accurately in your book, it's all, all gut disease and by extension all disease begins in the microbiome. Can you walk us through how this develops, how it starts that the microbiome becomes 
systems uh, breaks down and how it leads from a progressive step-by-step -step standpoint to arthritis or autoimmunity or, 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 or cancer or heart disease or whatever you know, type of degenerative disease we're talking about. How does the progression work? Absolutely. So I think you have a very sophisticated audience out there, but for those who may be a little bit unfamiliar, the microbiome, we're talking about all the microbes that live in and on the human body, about 100 trillion in all, more than a billion bacteria in one drop of fluid in your colon alone. And, you know, wait, 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 wait. Hang on, hang on, Doc. <laughs> one, one billion bacteria in a drop of intestinal fluid? There, that's right. That's oh, unbelievable. It's, it's a lot. It's oh. a lot. If, in fact, if you scraped up all the microbes in the gut, it would weigh about three or four pounds, even though we can't see them. Wow. But I think it, to really understand the connection between the microbiome and modern disease, I want to tell you about the hygiene hypothesis, which I think a lot of people will be familiar with that term. So in the 1950s in England, they were seeing skyrocketing rates of hay fever and eczema, particularly in kids. And so David Strawn was a professor at the London School of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene. And he was tasked with doing this sort of 25-year-long study, an epidemiological study in thousands of kids to see if he could figure out why. And uh, in the early 1980s, he published his findings. And they were two really surprising observations. The first was that these diseases were much less common in large households where there were a lot of siblings where the kids were getting sneezed on and coughed on and, you know, had frequent childhood illnesses. So that was in some way kind of immunizing them. And the second was that more affluent households where they were, if you will, loftier standards of personal hygiene had much higher rates of hay fever and eczema. So that mm. the second thing was that, hmm, maybe it was not good to be too clean. And this formed the basis for the hygiene hypothesis, which was later added on to by the good friends or the old friends hypothesis which also suggested that some of these more ancient diseases were important for training the immune system. So mm. it still stands today. If you look at a map of the world today, you see high rates of autoimmune diseases in the developed world, in Western Europe and North America and so on, and very low rates in the developing world. And as countries mm. become more industrialized, and we've seen this in Saudi Arabia and India, as countries become more industrialized and more widespread practices like chlorine in the water and antibiotics mm. and so on, we mm. see rising rates of autoimmune diseases. So it, this idea that there is a connection between exposure to ger germs in childhood and development of diseases is very real. And if you take the curve for the rise in most autoimmune diseases, things like Crohn's disease, MS, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, etc., you can superimpose that curve on the use of antibiotics and some of these modern kind of super sanitary practices. So That's there is no question about the contribution. There was a meta-analysis, a large study of over 7,000 children in New York a couple years ago, and they found that the number one risk factor for developing Crohn's and ulcerative colitis was indeed use of antibiotics. Mm. So it's this interplay between genetic susceptibility and environmental triggers, like wiping out our microbes, mm. that creates a perfect storm for disease to develop. Now, they, the hygiene hypothesis was about germs on the outside, bacteria. And by the way, for the listeners, germs are bacteria. They're, it's a, they're synonymous terms. So yes. germs, so when you're talking about germs in the hygiene hypothesis, you're talking about bacteria on the outside, exposure to these bacteria triggering our immune system to form protective chemicals, so to speak. Correct. But, yes. So then there was a leap that was made from the importance of bacteria on the outside to bacteria on the inside, right? Well, because we really couldn't measure them very easily before. I mean, the older techniques mm. for looking at the microbiome involved kind of sitting around for weeks on end while things grew in a Petri dish. Now with next generation DNA sequencing, we can take mm. a tiny sample of stool and we can pull the DNA out and know exactly what's growing in that sample. And so that's mm. really allowed us to make some direct correlations with things like oh, diversity. So we've been able to create microbial signatures for different diseases, for diseases mm. like Crohn's disease, ulcerative mm. colitis, obesity. Mm. And we see within the microbial signature things like low diversity of species and overabundance of certain species that are associated with inflammation and underrepresentation of others, low levels of short chain fatty acids and so on. So we're really able to, to look at these microbial footprints and find some very uh, common threads with different okay, diseases. Now, now, there's so many things that you, so, yeah, there's so many things to talk about here. So uh, tell me about, when you talk about low levels of one, high levels of another, what I think about is the balance of all the different types of bacteria. Yes, it, there exactly has to be, right. right? There's a relationship between too much 
much and too little, and also with fungus and can things like candida, correct? There's a yeah. relationship between the how much bacteria you have and how much fungal infection you have. Things like H. pylori, for example, which is a bacteria that is associated with all kinds of inflammatory health issues. That is balanced out by these bacteria, is that correct? Absolutely. It's all about balance. And even some of the commensal, the sort of helpful bacteria, if overrepresented and if they're allowed to grow unchecked, can become commensal problematic. Commensal meaning food. Commensal meaning food bacteria, right? Yes. And so, and so if you look at something like yeast, people think of yeast as being bad, but a certain low level of yeast in the body are essential for digestion. But it's when the yeast grow out of control. And mm. a common example of that is, you know, especially in women, when we take antibiotics and we get a yeast infection vaginally, that's overgrowth of yeast in our body. It's not that we've caught the yeast from a toilet seat or something. The yeast mm -hmm. are there and our body's present in low levels. But mm. when this sort of, you know, peacekeeper bacteria get killed off with an antibiotic, it then allows the yeast to grow out of control. So uh, for yeast infections, you would consider working on the microbiome, I assume. For people, I'm not sorry? not vaginal, for systemic candida, people who have the candida yeah. problem, you'd recommend working on the, on the microbiome. Oh, absolutely. And I doc, you doc, you we're just at it. We gotta take a break. We got a hard break here, but we'll be back here in just a sec. We're talking to Dr. Robin Chutkin, The Microbiome Solution is the book. I'm Farm Suspend. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Paid non attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas, is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice, and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention, Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24 7. Call 800 261 That's 800 261 a man named Dr. Joel Wallach who is anything but your typical doctor, both a veterinarian and naturopathic physician. Doc asks, why does the United States spend more money on health care by far and still rank 50th in health and longevity worldwide? He believes that people should empower themselves with a basic understanding of nutrition, take charge of their health, and attain optimal health and longevity through nutrition, not by toxic prescription drugs that lead to side effects and more toxic prescription drugs. Doc Wallach's message is resonating with an increasing number of Americans who are waking up to all the big government, big pharma, and big insurance manipulation of our health care system. I'm George Norrie, and I like what Doc Wallach is saying and doing to enlighten people about health care. Visit brightsideben.com and listen to Doc Wallach's Deadly Recipes lecture. It makes a lot of sense, and I urge you to join the Brightside Ben team. Go to brightsideben.com. That's brightsideben.com. Wait a minute. Don't spend a dime on emergency food storage until you visit ReadySupplyFoods.com. If you're interested in getting the most high-quality food for your money, then see our comparison page where we list all the companies and rank them by value for your dollar. You'll see that Ready Supply Foods sells 50% more food for your money than any other company. GMO-free, 25-year shelf life, great tasting, and free shipping. Make an informed decision by going to ReadySupplyFood.com today. Attention backpackers on a budget. Why spend 80 to $300 to pump clean survival water? Introducing the Viva Water Pump Kit from Viva Outdoor Products. Super easy to use and super lightweight at only 6.5 ounces, the Viva Water Pump Kit provides high flow rate at one ounce per stroke, can be one hand pumped, and is dependable and affordable at only $24.99. Filter not included. Get your Viva Water Pump Kit at viba-odp.com from Viva Outdoor Products. To a professional trader in precious metals, the key is spot price. Spot price is market price, what gold or silver actually costs on the exchange. Regular people looking to invest never get spot price because resellers add fees for everything. Refining, minting, brokerage costs, commissions. The public is never offered spot price until now. In a limited new customer outreach, JM Bullion offers you the chance to own a 10-ounce bar of pure silver at spot price. No fees, commissions, markups, not even a shipping cost. Now, through JM Bullion, own the most real investment of all at real cost. Not a piece of paper from Wall Street or a bank. A 10-ounce bar of silver at spot price. That's a solid investment. But you must act now. Go online to realpricesilver.com for this limited-time offer. That's realpricesilver.com. realpricesilver.com. Limit one offer per household. 50 United States only. 
We use mobile devices right against our bodies every day. But growing scientific evidence has emerged showing serious health risks associated with exposure to EMF radiation emitted from these devices. The solution is Defender Shield, the most effective mobile radiation shielding ever developed. Defender Shield blocks virtually 100% of EMF radiation from cell phones, tablets, and laptops and starts at just $64.99. Buy now at DefenderShield.com. For 10% off, use promo code GCN. DefenderShield.com, the worldwide leader in mobile radiation shielding. You are listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today.